fun piece of trivia. A gaming PC needs regular maintenance. The fact that we had to say this might sound like a joke to some of you, but many people had to learn this the hard way, especially those who got into gaming back in the day when consumers didn't really know much about the hardware running their machines. The fabled blue screen of death was almost always a consequence of overheating, and we don't want this to happen to young gamers. So if you're a PC gamer, you might want to get into the habit of checking to see what temperatures all your pieces of hardware are running at. Especially nowadays with great gaming rigs being so expensive. Who could afford to let their CPU and GPU die from overheating? The best way to do this is generally by using the built-in sensors in your hardware to track the temperature. And if you're wondering how you can do this and what the optimal temperatures for your CPUs and GPUs are, then stick around because we'll be answering all of these questions and more. First things first, let's say a bit about the optimal temperature for PC gaming. You're probably wondering whether the temperature will affect performance. And right off the bat, we want to reassure you that this isn't the case. The temperature of your hardware will not affect how this piece of hardware performs, so long as it's within acceptable parameters, of course. And what are these parameters? The thing to keep in mind here is that there isn't a single answer to this question. There just isn't one running temperature that's the best for all CPUs or GPUs. The acceptable temperature thresholds are generally a bit lower now that they had been just because the technology used in modern hardware is more intricate. But even more importantly, these thresholds will vary depending on the manufacturer and even sometimes the model. So while we can't talk about an ideal temperature for gaming, we can give you some approximates. We'll cover CPUs first, just because there's a bit less to say about them. You only have one choice between the two series of CPUs if you're building a gaming PC. These are the Intel Core and the AMD Ryzen series. We made a whole video discussing which of these two is better for gaming, so if you're interested to know more about this, then make sure to check that video out. We'll leave the link in the description. But back to the topic, AMD and Intel have respectively given 95 and 100 degrees Celsius as the maximum operating temperature for their processors. But it's highly unlikely that you'll ever reach these temperatures unless you're doing some heavy overclocking with inadequate cooling. And like we've said, a lot of it comes down to which model you're using. The i3 CPUs, for example, list 60 degrees as their maximum average temperature. But then you also have the AMD Athlon that lists 85 degrees as its maximum average temperature. If you want, you can check out the list with all of the models and their average temperatures in the source article. Generally speaking, however, the temperature for these processors should almost never go above 85 degrees Celsius, even if they're under heavy load, assuming of course that you're using the stock cooler and the factory clock settings. If it does, then something is not right, but more on that later. First, we have to talk about GPUs. The landscape isn't much different when it comes to GPUs, except that here the two big manufacturers are NVIDIA and AMD, with their GeForce and Radeon graphics cards respectively. The maximum temperature they list is 95 degrees Celsius, but then again, this temperature shouldn't really ever go above 85, although Radeon cards will generally run a bit hotter than GeForce cards just because their architecture is a bit more robust. However, the problem with GPUs is they don't really have uniform cooling solutions like CPUs do. Some are just better than others, and this can lead to a variety of problems. There are two primary types of air cooling for GPUs, open air and blower fan. Open air is the most common type. Graphics cards with this type of cooling can have anywhere between one and three fans to push the air through the heat sinks. Graphics cards with blower fans are definitely less popular, and for a good reason. The cooling system completely encloses the card and only uses one fan to regulate the airflow. As such, these cards generally run hotter and the only benefit to using them is if your case has limited space or bad airflow. The last thing to keep in mind is that some graphics cards have what's called the smart fan technology. And what this means is that the fans will only start working once a certain temperature is reached. Generally, this happens somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. This feature was implemented to cut power consumption and make the cards less noisy, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if your GPU feels like it's hotter than it should be when it's not doing much of anything. So once again, if your GPU isn't overclocked and has proper cooling, then it should rarely go above 85 degrees Celsius. We mentioned that modern hardware has built-in sensors implemented to keep track of the temperature, but how can you access these sensors? There are actually three ways to see how hot each of your components is running, and we'll go through all of them in this video. 
The most basic way to check these values is to refer to the BIOS. To access the BIOS, you just have to restart your computer and press the delete button as it's booting up. It's the most convenient way of doing this because it doesn't require any third-party software. But the drawback is obvious. You have to restart your computer to do this. Alternatively, you could always use the useful utilities that Intel, Nvidia and AMD all include with their CPUs and GPUs. For CPUs, these are the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility and the Ryzen Master Utility. Both of these will let you see the CPU temperature in addition to other great insight, and you can even easily overclock your CPU from here. On the GPU side of things, we have the NVIDIA Control Panel and the AMD Catalyst Control Center. And again, you can easily check your graphics card's temperature here. But you can see a wealth of other data as well. Although it's worth noting that hardware manufacturers also include their own overclocking utilities, like the MSI Afterburner or the Asus GPU Tweak, for example. And finally, if the first two options aren't to your liking, then you can always use one of the many third-party software that lets you check the temperature of your hardware. The ones we suggest are the Open Hardware Monitor and ADA64. Open Hardware Monitor is entirely free, but unfortunately it's still in beta, so it might not work with all systems and components. Conversely, ADA64 is an even more powerful utility, but it's not free, so you'll have to settle for the free trial if you don't want to buy it. The source of your problems won't always be the same thing if you're dealing with high CPU or GPU temperatures. This can happen because of the excessive dust buildup in the heatsink or poor airflow in the case, or it can even be because of something that's more outside of your control, like the high ambient temperatures or if something's defective with the CPU or the GPU itself. So what can you do to prevent this? Well, the first thing is to clean the heat sinks. If you have a PC and you've never done this, then the dust buildup inside is probably massive. And there are several ways you can do this, but we won't be covering them in this video, although we'll leave a link in the description for our article that will show you how to do this. The second thing you can do is check the airflow. If the airflow within the case is poor, then it's possible that your CPU and GPU aren't getting enough cool air to run through the heatsinks. If this is the case, then your motherboard is likely to show an increased temperature as well as your GPU and CPU. The best way to improve airflow is by installing a case fan or two. Ideally, there should be two, one on the front to suck cool air in and the other in the back to blow hot air out. But even if you can't install two, even just one case will go a long way to improve the airflow. And if you can't or don't want to buy these fans and you have problems with airflow, then you should definitely consider keeping your computer case open. Unlike the heatsink and airflow problems, which you can always influence, there's also the possibility that the problem is just the ambient temperature. And what we mean by this is just how hot it is in the room. If it's hotter for you in the summer than in the winter, then it's also hotter for your computer. This is a big problem for those who live in tropic regions, but it can get pretty scorching even in colder temperate climates during the summer months. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about this. What you can do, however, is make sure that you're getting the most out of your cooling. If the ambient temperature is too much for your coolers to handle even then, you'll just simply have to upgrade. This doesn't mean that you'll have to replace your CPU or GPU, but you definitely should get case-mounted fans at this point. They'll definitely be worth the investment. And finally, the problem might not be with you at all. If you've tried everything we said in this video, and your hardware is still overheating, then you could be dealing with a defective component. And this could be anything. The power supply, a fan, or even something with the processors themselves. There's little you can do to check for defective hardware, unless you're an expert. And even if you were, you wouldn't need us to tell you what to do. So if you're suspecting that the hardware is defective, then you should contact the store where you bought it, or turn to a certified technician. And there you have have it. A few tips and tricks you can use to see what temperature your CPU and GPU are running at and to prevent them from overheating. Let us know in the comments if there's anything we've missed. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.